Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Science of Life and this is Preeti, your science mentor. Students, today we are going to study about microorganisms, the very small small and tiny organisms everywhere around us. Yes, now before starting I want to ask you one question. When the season's first rain arrives, do you uh, smell something? Very peculiar smell? Yes, we love that smell. From where that smell comes? That smell comes from the soil's bacteria. Yes, now see, microorganisms as we all know, they are micro, means tiny, very very tiny that we cannot see from our naked eyes. Now, the question is, if we cannot see them, then why to study about them? Why to waste time? Yes, but let me tell you, microorganisms are both friends and foes. Yes, friends because they are useful in lots of things, in lots of industries. And foes because they are enemies, means they are harmful, they cause us lots of diseases and infections. And if we are not going to study about them, if we are not going to research on them, then how we are going to make medicines and vaccines against them? Yes, that means we need to study those tiny and small microorganisms. So now let's begin. Microorganisms. Micro the word means very small, tiny and organisms means all the living ones. So, these tiny and small, these are very small that we cannot see them through our naked eyes. Now, then how we can see them? We can see them under only microscope. Without microscope, we cannot see microorganisms. And mostly microorganisms are unicellular. Uni means one and cellular means cell. So, they are having mostly only one cell in their bodies. And where we can find microorganisms? Everywhere. Soil, air, water, marshy areas. Everywhere we can find the microorganisms. Now let's come to the microorganisms classification. Microorganisms are actually categorized into five groups. Yes, the first one is bacteria, then virus, then algae, fungi and protozoa. These are the five groups of microorganisms. Now, how to learn these names? These are very typical names. How to learn these names? Normally students face this problem. So I have a small technique to learn all these groups. See, Bate, Vate, Altu, Faltu, Process Hai. Bate, Vate, Altu, Faltu, Process Hai. Yes, from Vate, bad bacteria. From Vate, virus. From Altu, L, algae. From Faltu, fungi. And from protozoa, we can take pro, that is process. So, Vate, Vate, Altu, Faltu, process hai. Bacteria, virus, algae, fungi, protozoa. By this simple technique, easily you can learn all the five groups of microorganisms easily. Now, coming to the first category that is bacteria. Yes, bacteria are actually found everywhere, soil, air, water. But the thing to remember is that these are found in our mouth as well as well as our intestines. Yes, bacteria are found in our mouth and intestines also. Now, what they do there? That is another question. They are useful for us. But that we will discuss later on. So bacteria are also found in our intestines and mouth. Now coming to the shapes of bacteria. Bacteria's shapes are rod shape also, spiral also and spherical also. They are found in these shapes. Now the important thing to remember is that the first ever found bacteria's name. Yes, it was cyanobacteria and its another name is blue green algae cyanobacteria another name blue green algae yes and bacteria are classified further on the basis of their obtaining nutrition so bacteria are photosynthetic 
chemosynthetic, aerobic and anaerobic. Photosynthetic bacteria. Actually these bacteria are having chlorophyll in them and they can perform photosynthesis and they can make their own food. For example, cyanobacteria that is blue-green algae. Now chemosynthetic chemo. Chemo means chemicals. The bacteria that perform chemical reactions on the inorganic substances and obtain their nutrition are called chemosynthetic bacteria. Then aerobic. Aerobic actually word means air. The bacteria that need air, that need oxygen for surviving, that are aerobic bacteria. And anaerobic bacteria that do not require any oxygen. Without oxygen also they can survive. And these categories of bacteria have different different functions that we are going to discuss later on. So these were the bacteria. The first one is cyanobacteria, another name blue green algae. Shapes, rods, spirals, spherical as well as their mode of nutrition that is photosynthetic, chemosynthetic and they are aerobic as well as anaerobic also. Now coming to the second category that is viruses. Virus, actually nowadays we are hearing lots of about viruses that is corona. Yes, corona is also a virus. Actually viruses are very very tiny and small as compared to the other microorganisms. So, we cannot see viruses under normal microscope. They can be seen only under electron microscope. Electron microscope actually magnifies the things 500 million times. So, under that only we can see viruses. Now, one thing that you should remember about the viruses are that viruses normally are non-living when they are outside of your body. But, once they enter your body, they become living. So we can say viruses are connecting link between living and non-living things. So this is the important thing to remember. Now, shapes of viruses. They are of different shapes. They are all cuboidal also, spiral also, wire shaped also. Different, different shapes they are having. And nowadays we can see more and more varieties of viruses are generating and we are getting that diseases and all for example coronavirus so viruses are very very dangerous now coming to the third category that is algae yes algae you must have seen on the ponds and lakes a green layer you must have seen all must have seen a green layer that layer is called as algae actually algae contains chlorophyll in that so they are completely photosynthetic. They perform photosynthesis and obtain their nutrition from that. Now all the algae are unicellular normally means having one cell only. They are not having any legs, hands, just a green layer structure that's it. But seaweeds actually they are phytoplanktons. So exception is their seaweeds. Seaweeds are multicellular and they form large colonies. So, all the algae are unicellular except seaweeds that you have to learn seaweeds that are phytoplanktons. Now, coming to the fourth category that is fungi. Yes, students, you must have observed some white white form like structure on the pickles or uh, if your bread is spoiled and if it is uh, for 10 days old, then you must have seen black patches over there. What is that? That is fungi. As you now you, you will say to me that my, these are microorganisms then how we can see them? Actually that is the colony of fungi. Lots of fungi is there. Yes. So these patches actually are fungi. Now normally fungi are unicellular but they are multicellular as well. So unicellular are yeast. And multicellular are mushrooms. You must have eaten the mushrooms. Many of you must be having the favorite also mushrooms. So mushrooms are fungi only. Now there are different categories of fungi. They are saprophytes also. They are parasitic also and they are symbiotic also. Now what are saprophytes? Actually saprophytes are those fungi that obtain their nutrition from dead plants and animals that are saprophytes. Now parasitic as I explained to you earlier also 
parasites means those who obtain their nutrition from the host and completely damage the host so that are parasitic now symbiotic symbiotic fungi are very friendly they actually maintain the mutual relationship with the host they give benefit to the host as well as take nutrition from the host so they are very friendly so these were the categories of fungi and they are unicellular also and multicellular also now the last group is that protozoa yes protozoa are all unicellular we cannot see them through we cannot see them through our naked eyes protozoas examples are amoeba and paramecium you must have heard them before also amoeba and paramecium the things to remember in protozoa is for amoeba they are having pseudopodia pseudo means false and podia means feet false feet yes Amoeba have pseudopodia for locomotion and cilia for paramecium. Paramecium have cilia that are hair like structures and that help them in movement. So remember the word pseudopodia as well as cilia. Now one more thing about protozoa is that they cannot survive in the temperature above 80 degrees Celsius and they need moisture to live. So students, these were the categories of all the microorganisms that we have learned by the technique Bate, Vate, Altu, Faltu process here. Yes, and these were the things that you need to learn about the microorganisms. So about the microorganisms, their uses and their diseases, we are going to learn in our next video. Till then, stay safe at home and keep learning. Take care.